Today's video is all about my sand mixer and mixing sand. Now I've got a pile of sand in there and we'll crush it up and we'll see how long it takes and then we'll get a more detailed view of what my sand mixer does and how to mix sand from fresh from new. Put on five minutes and we'll press start. Now what we'll do, put the roller down so to crush the sand. This is what the sand looks like after three and a half minutes of mulling. It's a nice fine powdery state and now I can add water and reuse the sand again. Here is a closer view of the timer. Now we've got five minutes dialed up again and then we'll go and press start. Now I've got a pitcher, it's half a litre of water, but I'll only put half of that in there just in case the sand gets too wet. And we'll see at the end of five minutes, we'll see how well mixed the sand is. Now we're giving it about two and a half minutes and I'll just pause it for the moment and we'll stick the hand in there we go we've got a lump there that sand is probably a fraction bit too wet so I stuck just a little bit more than a quarter of a litre of water in there for the sand but that's how long it takes it's about two and a half to three minutes to mix a batch of sand and it is approximately 15 kilos of sand. The next thing I'll do with the sand is I'll show you there's the compactor wheel and there's the arm and what I've done I've put a jammed a piece of wood under there so what I'll do try and film this at the same time now yeah, that compacts the sand a lot but compacts it a bit too much so now I'll unpause the mixer and now the weight is off the compactor roller we'll let that run a little bit so that'll fluff up the sand a bit it's not as compacted and then it'll be ready to put in a drum ready for moulding to take the sand out of the mixer I've raised the muller wheel to the raised position and all I do now is just use a plastic scoop and then dump it into the bin so on until the muller is completely empty. This is a nice aerial shot of the sand mixer and you can see how the ploughs on the left hand side direct the sand back underneath the compactor roller and the right hand ploughs break up the sand again so you're continually compacting and breaking up the sand to mix it properly. If 
if you want to build one of these mullers or a sand mixer, whatever you like to call it, here are some of the basic dimensions. Right, the mixer bowl in diameter is 725 millimetres. The mixing bowl height is 135 millimetres. The compactor roller is 150 millimetres wide. And the compactor roller is 230 millimetres in diameter. There's one more dimension I can show you. It's probably not that important. But this compactor roller is very heavy. So the actual arm that I use to lift it up and down is 1.36 metres long. Here is a closer look of the ploughs. There's a screw there. So I can adjust it that way or up and down. Like I said, all that does is redirect your sand underneath your compactor roller. The exact distance there to the centre of it doesn't really matter that much. It's probably up to you when you build one. And here is the other plough. This actually breaks up your sand you can see it, same idea, there's a little screw so I can adjust it up and down or around. And that position from there, from the side of the muller, yeah, it's a bit up to you to where you exactly want it. And here is my microwave oven timer. It switches it on and off, so I'll give you a demonstration there. You click up 10 minutes, then you press the start button. And away it goes for 10 minutes. Then you can press off once, and then you press twice, and it cancels it. This is what it looks like underneath my sand mixer muller. It's just basically an old washing machine gearbox that I've slightly modified so it'll run slower. And over there is the electric motor. That is a washing machine motor. It's about 300 watts capacity and that's about all you need really to drive this sand mixer. You don't need a really large motor so it's easy to get hold of washing machine motors. Here is a view of the side wall of my mixer. It's made out of galvanised steel and how I fix it to the base is self-tapper screws. There's one, there's another and there's another. And the base itself I cast out of aluminium 28 years ago. That's probably still the biggest casting I've ever made. And that's how those self-tappers, they just screw into that aluminium plate. You can use chipboard, but it wears easily for the base. But what you can do is put galvanised sheet metal on top, glue it on, and that'll give it a harder wearing surface. I've already shown you how I remix my sand after it's been used after a casting session. But now I'll show you how I mix a brand new batch of sand. And you're probably be thinking now, how much bind do I put to it? Well, I use 7.5% roughly of bentonite. That's the binder for the sand. And at first I'll be using 2% moisture and then I'll probably add a little bit more because it'll end up being too dry. So before I switch it on, I usually mix the water first and then put in the bentonite.
That was about two and a half minutes to mix the sand thoroughly. It hasn't got much strength, it just crumbles apart my fingers. That's because there's no binder in it. But the water has been thoroughly mixed in. And I'll switch it on again and I'll slowly add the bentonite. I add it slowly, I don't add the whole lot at once. I've given it about 20 minutes and I need a certain amount of time to coat each grate of sand with bentonite so the sand properly holds together when you mould it. So I'll give you a demonstration. This is only half the bentonite that I wanted to use. It's got a bit of strength, not too bad, and it can be used for aluminium but I would add probably a little bit more bentonite. I've only used about half of it, but what happens is I'm going to use this sand for iron and I'm going to add coal dust to it. And that coal dust tends to weaken the sand, so you've got to make this a little bit stronger so when the coal dust is added, it holds together. I've given the sand mixer another 20 minutes to develop full strength and I can tell it's getting a lot stronger in green strength. If you have a look over here, you'll notice the sand is starting to fall over the plough. That means it's getting very strong, the sand. So I'll pause it for the moment. Yeah, that sand has got a lot of strength. It's probably got too much. But like I said, when I add the coal dust, it will weaken it again. But it's starting to feel dry as well because the moisture is being absorbed by the bentonite. Up until now, the sand you're looking at, it's really a non-ferrous sand. But because I use cast iron most of the time, I will be adding coal dust. And here is what it looks like, black dirty shit it is. And this stuff actually burns and lifts the metal up so it doesn't stick to the sand. I forgot to mention the percentage, so if you want to add coal dust to your sand, I add about 3.5%. It seems to work quite well at that. I've given the coal dust and sand mixture about 5 minutes to thoroughly mix in there, and now it's gone from the beigey, sort of creamy colour to now it's a dark grey colour. And also, the sand, it's got strength, but it's very dry. 2% moisture with coal dust is just not enough. So I've got to add more moisture. So what I'll do, I'll add in 1% increments and see how it goes. One thing with uh, green sand, if you are melting metals and pouring them into green sand moulds, when you're starting to get over 5% moisture, you have to be extremely wary because if the moisture cannot escape through the grains of sand and the porosity, it will explode or it will start to boil. It's not a good situation to be in.
I've given it another five minutes and we'll try the sand again. That's made a lot of difference. It's got a lot of strength, that sand. But I like it a bit more moist, so I might just stick another half a percent, so that'll bring it to three and a half percent moisture. Now have a look at the sand, it's starting to spill over the plough. I can tell now that the sand is the right consistency what I need. See how it's spilling over there? Now I'll pause it again. Do the time on it test. See how the lump stays together and the sand sticks just a little bit to your sand, doesn't stick a great deal. That's how I can tell. But if you're using different sands, like if you're using a finer sand, you will need more moisture, more bentonite to hold it together. If you use a coarser sand, you can use probably less than what I use, 7.5%. Here is an interesting experiment I would like to try. I'd like to put weights on top and keep putting weights there's no support underneath and we'll see when it breaks. Nope. 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 Still not breaking. Going to have to get some more weight. Oop, there it goes. Yep. Now we'll go and weigh it up and see if you can guess what the weight is. And I'll put the weight on the end of the video. I forgot to mention how high this box is. It's not very high at all. It's 47 millimeters. So very thin box and it still supported that weight. But the next experiment I want to try is how much area or how much space is between the sand grains so the steam can escape. So I've got one litre here and we'll tip it in and we'll see how much it takes. As you can see, the water start to overflow, so I would say we'd have all the space filled up. I'll measure how much water is left, and you can have a guess again, and I'll put the answer at the end of the video. So what the last experiment showed, there is space between the grains of sand in a moulding box but if you have too much moisture and I say for beginners about 4% moisture if you start to go above that you may be able to go above that but as a beginner never go above 4% the first thing that happens is you'll get blowholes but the worst thing that can happen is the mould can explode when the metal hits it so be careful